Hello students, in the previous class we looked at the moon. We learnt quite a few interesting facts about the moon. We saw the phases of the moon, we saw why the phases of moon occur, we understood uh, the concept of solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse, we saw how craters are formed among many other things. In today's class we will look at the stars. Stars are those objects that twinkle at night, there are a lot of them. If you observe carefully, you will see that they come in various colors. These stars are just like the sun, they emit their own light. How is it that the sun appears so big, but the stars appear so tiny? In fact, even though they appear very tiny, many of them are much bigger and brighter than the sun itself, but they are so far away that they appear like small dots. To give you an idea, light takes approximately 8 minutes to travel from sun to the earth, whereas the next nearest star called the Proxima Centauri is so far away that light takes close to 4 and a half years to travel between that star and earth. Because of this, the astronomers use a different unit to measure such large distances between the stars, they call it the light year. One light year is in fact defined as the distance travelled by light in one year. Let us now see how long a light year is. You know how fast your school bus travels? Let us say the school bus travels at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. This means the bus takes one hour to travel 40 kilometers. Scientists have measured the speed of light to be approximately 3 lakh kilometers per second. That is light can travel 3 lakh kilometers in one second, which means light can travel nearly 7 times around the earth in one second. So, by the time your school bus travels 40 kilometers, light would have traveled 3 lakh into 3600, which is 108 crore kilometers. We get this number by multiplying the speed of light by the number of seconds in an hour. So, one light year equals 108 crore into 24 hours into 365 days, which is this huge number that is shown on the screen. Look how huge this number is. We saw that the second nearest star to earth which is the Proxima Centauri is roughly 4.5 light years away from earth. That would be a distance that is shown on the screen here, which is actually a very large number. Now you know why astronomers devised a new unit to measure the distance between the stars. So, what does this large distance mean? This large distance implies that when we observe the sun, we are actually looking at the sun which was there 8 minutes ago. When we observe the stars, we are actually looking at them when they were maybe a thousand years ago, a few years ago or maybe even a millennia ago. So, what do these large distances mean? These large distances mean that when we observe the sun, we are looking at what happened on the sun 8 minutes ago. When we are observing the stars, we are looking at what happened on the stars a few years ago or decades ago, in some cases many centuries or millennia ago. Now, here is a point to ponder, why do not we see the stars during the daytime? Take a minute and think about it. Now, you all know that earth rotates from west to east, which means all the stars appear to move from east to west just like the sun. Does this apply to moon as well? Do all stars move from east to west? 
If it is the earth's rotation that is causing the stars to appear to move, then all stars should move, right? Not really. To understand how this works, we will look at a spinning top. If you observe carefully, you will see that there is one point on the very top of the spinning top, the very tip of it, which remains stationary while the rest of the top rotates. Similarly, there will be one point in the sky where the stars will appear to remain stationary. Recollect that the earth has a north pole and a south pole and that the earth rotates about this north-south axis. All those stars which lie along this north-south axis will hence remain fixed in the night sky. Do you think there is a star that lies along the north-south axis on the axis of earth rotation? Yes, there is actually one star which we call as the pole star that lies along this north-south axis. In fact, this pole star remains fixed in the night sky. The pole star is actually used by sailors to navigate because it points towards the northern direction in the sky. What else did you observe about these stars? Let us look at these images to help you observe these things. Do you see that stars form some sort of a pattern here? These patterns are called constellations. Constellations are groups of stars that have recognizable shapes. These are actually the natural formations which we were discussing about while studying celestial objects. Our ancestors found that some of these stars always appear in a particular group forming a constellation. And these constellations resembled everyday objects or animals like the dog, lion, bear, the cross, etc. They hence named these constellations based on how they appear. They also named the stars present in these constellations. However, the names depended on which civilization these people belonged to. For example, the Romans called the bear Ursa Major. We Indians called it the Saptarshi Mandala. The stars in the Saptarshi Mandala are named after the seven great sages Marichi, Vasishta, Angirasa, Atri, Pulastya, Pulaha and Kratu. These constellations are not just pictures or formations in the sky. They help in navigation and many other matters. Recall for example, how the pole star always pointed to the north direction. If the pole star always points towards the northern direction, then all you need to do to identify the direction is to find the pole star. How do you find the pole star? If you look at the Saptarshi, you see the two stars that point north. If you follow the direction pointed by these two stars, you can see the pole star. You should remember that the pole star is visible only in the northern hemisphere. Now here is an assignment for you. Identify all the constellations that we mentioned above. Also try to follow the direction of the Saptarshi and try to identify the pole star. Another constellation of interest is called the Orion or the Mahavyata. This is perhaps the most striking and the most beautiful constellations you can see in the night sky. As the name implies, the Orion looks like a human with a weapon or like a hunter. You can use this constellation to identify the brightest star in the night sky, which is called the Sirius. If you follow the line formed by the three stars on the belt of the Orion, Towards the east, you find Sirius. In fact, Sirius is a part of another constellation called the Canis Major. There are many other identifiable shapes in the night sky. Now, here is an assignment for you. Try to identify as many shapes as you can in the night sky. You should remember that these constellations are not made up of a few stars. In fact, in any given direction in the sky, there are a large number of stars. However, the stars that we see 
are the brightest ones and the ones that are closer to us. Also observe that the stars remain fixed with respect to each other. For example, the constellations do not change their shapes every now and then. Why do you think this is so? Alright, in today's class we have learned something about the stars. We have seen a new unit used to measure the distance between the stars. We have seen what constellations are, how they look like. We have seen why and how the stars move. In the next class, we will look into the solar system.